indoor growers, microgreen growers, other people who use these 10 by 20 shallow trays, or even deep trays for that matter. Um, any of you saw Bootstrap Farmer came out with a tray washer a few months ago, cost about 3,500 bucks. Um, to me, that's not very bootstrap-ish. Uh, maybe that's the name of their company, but that's not bootstrapping together a farm for those of us who can't afford that sort of money. Um, you know, for people who are looking to run 500 trays of a day uh, to get through one of those things, yeah, it may make a lot of sense if you're um, really growing intensively and have a large market and you're just needing to clean trays as quickly as possible. You may be a four, 500, six, 800 tray a week grower. Uh, that's not the reality for a lot of people in the world though. So I set out for myself to kind of reverse engineer that, look at a couple other designs from other people around the internet to come up with a solution that is my scale. Um, so we're, this whole video series is going to talk about exactly that. How uh, can we build a tray washer without breaking the bank, maybe for a tenth of the cost? I'm in this for about 325 bucks total, um, and we'll break down all the pieces. This first video, I just really want to talk about what do you need to get ready to do this, right? What's the equipment? What are the supplies? What's the design? Um, how did that uh, morph a little bit over time just as I was building it? Because I'm definitely a build the plane as you go sort of individual, but I did have to download my brain a little bit onto a piece of paper to design to get me a starting point. So the first thing you're going to need, like I said, is a, a good design. I really had to sketch this out to try and help me conceptualize how many fittings was I going to need. Uh, and then when I got to the point of ordering fittings, I changed a little bit of how this looked as well. I didn't ever come back and modify my design here. But it helped me just get a good count and kind of a good idea based off of my measurements of the sink. Um, and I guess that's one thing I didn't say. This design was designed to sit over a basin sink. Um, that way water will be contained. Um, I'm going to cover this with a piece of four millimeter plastic and we're gonna talk about how we're gonna attach that here as we go through this video as well. Um, but all the water is gonna go down into a sink. I've, there's a couple people on the Facebook microgreen groups that have a similar design that is used outdoors. Unfortunately, for six months of a year here in Montana, I can't exactly go outside and wash my trays. Um, so I needed something that I could modify over a sink. So this could very easily be changed to a freestanding washer as well that could be used outdoors. Um, but yeah, so I just had to get a count on my fittings more than anything. Um, I chose to go with one inch PVC. Uh, it tends to be a little bit stronger. You can probably get away with three quarter inch PVC and be fine. Uh, your measurements may be a little bit different from the things I'm gonna talk about in this video. Everything here has been scaled for one inch. Um, and yeah, ultimately I'm here to try and save uh, those of us who are starting out at 100 to 200 trays a week, right? Or a lot less, a lot of time and heartache. And if you really like this content, please like and subscribe. Also going to set up a Patreon page that I'll link below. Um, and if you're like, hey, this dude just saved me like over three grand on buying the Bootstrap Farmer Tray Washer, and you feel like throwing me five, 10, 50 bucks or whatever, please jump on Patreon and I'll hope to keep this sort of content coming um, that really helps us optimize our efficiencies without breaking the bank. How can we lean up our farm and really make things uh, really good? So... Um, like I said, I opted for one inch PVC because this makes a really solid frame. I uh, probably could have gotten away with a three quarter inch, um, and, but yeah, your fittings are going to be smaller with a three quarter inch PVC. It may, might also have more flex in it. Um, but what I found as I was building this out too is I had so many of these fittings that are much larger anyway of a diameter that it kind of didn't matter because it, like they're, the fittings are what's providing a lot of the structural rigidity here. Um, so with this guy, the things you're going to need, one inch PVC, like I said, uh, or three quarter inch, whatever size you choose to go with. Another big one, PVC fittings. I highly recommend going to 247 Gardening. I'm going to try and get an affiliate link and I will link it here. And if not, just go to 247 Gardening and order these things. You will save 75% on just going to Home Depot or Lowe's or your big box store locally, hardware, and, and buying these. Uh, these are furniture grade. Um, 
So they're not designed to really hold pressure, um, but they're also more UV resistant, if that makes any difference to you. Um, but they're also a lot cheaper. These cost me, uh, the tees, the straight tees cost me 87 cents or so. The corners, you know, corners here, uh, the three-way tees or four-way tees, these guys right here cost me around um, a buck 20. And the five-way tees that you see right here, so one, or five-way crosses, one, two, three, four, then the fifth one down here cost me like a buck 30. Um, you know, if you just go to Home Depot, a tee alone is going to cost you about three or four bucks. So you can save a lot of money by shopping around, going online, doing stuff like that. So I'm $30 into my uh, fittings um, for this project. And I ended up having a handful of extra ones at the end of it that I didn't end up using. So, um, you know, you could probably get away for 20, 25 bucks, depending on the size sink you're trying to retrofit a washer to. Uh, so fittings and PVC. You're also going to want a PVC cutter. This is a ratcheting cutter. Really simple. It just ratchets down and then we'll slice your PVC somewhere when it gets all the way down. If you've never used one of these, it's really simple to release. You just pull down on the one handle and it opens it back up. And then yeah, you just click it down and away you go. Other tools you will need. So when you are cutting your PVC, you're going to want to measure and mark your PVC to cut it. So, you know, just little things hopefully you got hanging around your house, Sharpies and... Uh, uh, and measuring tapes. One of the things that I found came very in handy as I was doing this is just, you know, a pipe wrench or a channel lock wrench, something like that. Um, because it, you will inevitably be putting this together and then you'll pull it apart to do another step or something like that. Um, and then you will have a very short piece of PVC and a fitting that does not leave you very much room to grab onto. And it's very hard um, sometimes, especially if you put pressure on it to pull that sucker out. And so just a, a pair of channel locks, um, or a pipe wrench or something that a crescent wrench that you can grab them gives you a lot more, uh, gripping power on those. Other things you're going to need, uh, screwdriver, 7 16th, uh, inch wrench. Um, and this is going to come in handy when you go to bolt on the, uh, surface, cleaner onto the frame. And so if I show you that here real quick, I just took four quarter inch bolts um, and uh, bolted them on using a lock stop uh, stop nut on the top. So those ones with little plastic inserts that won't walk out, some quarter inch washers, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, essentially with these bolts on one side, there's a Phillips head, um, Phillips head that you hold with your screwdriver, the other side for a quarter inch is a 7 16 wrench, and you just hold it, screw it in, away you go. To go along with those bolts, you're going to want a drill, and you're going to want a quarter inch drill bit too. So just a couple of those tools that go along with this build out. For the last thing, and this is the most expensive piece, but some sort of pressure washer with and I apologize because this is already assembled and I'm going to disassemble this a little bit in the other videos to talk about how it went together. Um, but then you can see also in the matching green works green, um, a pressure washer surface cleaner. Now the purpose of the surface cleaner is it does have a little propeller thing in here that has, if you can see it in here, pressure washer nozzles on it that spin as it goes and gives a really good uh, scour on your trays. I've seen a couple people, a uh, couple people posted on Facebook, uh, those different microgreens groups talking about how the surface cleaner at about 2,000 psi um, is enough to clean trays. And people who have done a two-sided surface cleaner, so a top and a bottom surface cleaner, can run through about four to 500 trays in an hour. Um, this is only a one-sided. I'm only at 100 trays. If it takes me twice as long to get through my trays, I am still cutting off five to six hours of my total tray washing time per week. So yeah, it's still a huge win for me to kind of um, just have a one-sided. One thing I will say is because I use the T's, I'm sorry, the five-way crosses here, I would be able to very easily retrofit this um, by um, taking this and putting another corner, just replicating what I did on the top on the bottom more or less, 
um, that would hold a surface cleaner upside down. Um, the thing is, if you go that route, I was looking at it, it cost me about another $200 more between getting a more powerful pressure washer with a higher gallons per minute, um, buying two surface cleaners, buying all the fittings to split the pressure washer hose into two different hoses. Um, if I was a much larger grower, I would definitely be doing that. Um, and who knows, in the future I may get there, and when I get there, I will likely retrofit this thing to um, go that direction. But in the meantime, this is more than enough, um, and it's going to save me plenty of time. Um, so, material-wise, what all is in here? Like I said, 1-inch PVC. This 1-inch PVC, I actually got two 10-foot pieces um, and used just about all of it. Um, I thought I was going to run out at one point. Now... Again, I'm a build the plane as I go sort of person, and it would take me longer to sit down with a pencil and paper and try and figure out all these measurements rather than just like fiddling with it, trying the fittings, trying the piece, seeing if I need to lengthen it, shorten it, whatnot. Um, so I do waste materials, but I feel that a $10 piece of PVC is definitely worth me saving hours and hours of my time um, in the long run of trying to actually just like engineer this properly because that's not how my brain works. Um, yeah, and so essentially what this does is this is going to sit with these T's on the end on the basin of my sink right here. Um, so that's all it is. Pretty simple. We'll wrap it in plastic. Oh yeah, that reminds me of the last piece here. So you can get these on Amazon. Um, these are one inch poly row cover, uh, PVC poly row cover clamps. Um, and so if you see people gardening that use poly, uh, ethylene or other sort of row covers you can make frames out of a one inch PVC and they just snap on just like that gonna use that in this contraption when I have my four millimeter plastic draped over this to hold that plastic in place um, and then we're gonna figure out a way to um, probably I'll use something like a, uh, a gorilla tape or some other sort of tape to reinforce the edges here that way, it'll only leave a small hole for the tray to slide in, and the plastic will come down to just above the tray. Uh, trying to keep, again, all the water I can going down um, from this device uh, as we can. So, with that, that's my version of tray cleaner. Have not run this thing yet. Don't know if it's going to work out, uh, but if all indications are pointing to, it will. Going back pressure washer. Um, again, 2000 PSI is what I'm using. I found on sale a 2000 PSI pressure washer this spring at Costco. Um, and that's what really spurred me to do this. I've been thinking about doing something like this. I've been on the fence about different pressure washers, 3000, 3400, 4000 PSI pressure washers uh, for a while now. Just and then like trying to even figure out like what is a pressure washer when they're electric pressure washers and they're claiming up to a certain PSI. Things like that were just a little wiggy for me. Saw this one, $230 at Costco came with both the pressure washer and the surface cleaner. The price was right. Uh, and so yeah, I just jumped on it and away we go. So that's what I have for this video. Next video, I'm going to talk about dimensions um, of this thing how uh, tips and tricks of how to put it together because once you start putting pvc together um, i definitely found there are some things that work well and some things that don't work well when you have very rigid uh in small spaces where you don't have a lot of pvc to flex um and yeah we'll just kind of talk through how i built this thing out and then um, we'll do another video of it in action so with that until next time if, again if you like this content please like and subscribe uh, if you feel like I saved you 3500 bucks, uh, please, I'll take five or ten. Patreon links below. Um, and hopefully I'll keep this stuff coming because ultimately I've received, and, and I'll go back and just say, if you don't got five bucks because we've all been there, when you're starting up a farm, it is tight. I get that. Like, I've received so much free help in uh, gr growing and expanding and learning about how to grow microgreens. You know, I'm, I'm paying the buck forward here, right? But if you choose to pay it back to me, I'm not going to say no. So, uh, Patreon's below. Like, subscribe. Love you guys. Uh, until next time, keep on growing.